Thank you, Chairman Menendez, Ranking Member Rish, and distinguished members of the committee. I'd also like to thank you for your kind words and support of Peace Corps and Peace Corps reauthorization legislation. And a special note of thanks to Senators Van Hollen and Merkley for their very kind remarks and support of Peace Corps. Um, I'd also like to thank my husband, Andy, who is here with me today. Uh, my daughters, Emily and Casey, my parents, Ralph and Janet, my very large extended family for their unwavering love and support, and to my Peace Corps family, including the staff, volunteers, host families, and counterparts for the heart and soul with which they carry out our mission every day. I am deeply honored and humbled to appear before you today as President Biden's nominee for Director of the Peace Corps at this very unique point in the agency's history. Having started my career in the public sector, I am also incredibly grateful for the opportunity I had to serve as a small business development volunteer, along with my husband, Andy, in Romania shortly after the fall of communism. As is true for many volunteers, my Peace Corps service challenged my perceptions, expanded my worldview, and fundamentally transformed my life. Living and working alongside Romanians during their pivotal transition to democracy gave me a deep appreciation for the power of human connection and the importance of engaging across difference with intention, humility, and respect. I carried this understanding with me as I took on various leadership roles at nonprofit organizations dedicated to supporting underserved communities around the world. In 2014, I returned to the Peace Corps first serving as the country director in Malawi for five years, then as the chief of operations for the Africa region and chief executive officer, and now as an expert consultant. It has been an incredible journey, but my service journey is not unique. We see time and again that Peace Corps service extends well beyond a two-year commitment. It fosters a lifetime of global connection and national service. And the presence of volunteers in the furthest reaches of other countries speaking foreign languages and honoring cultures has an impact that goes far beyond the individual contributions of any one volunteer. I have had the distinct privilege of hearing from foreign ambassadors, ministers, and local leaders who tell me what a powerful signal of friendship it is to see Americans living in rural communities and working side by side with the people of their country. And American ambassadors regularly attest that the Peace Corps is the most cost-effective grassroots diplomacy that the United States has to offer. The Peace Corps' mission of world peace and friendship is more important now than ever. Not only are we just beginning to recover from an unprecedented global pandemic, but we are also reeling from the impacts of a global food crisis, climate change, and growing political and social division. As the world confronts these compounding crises, demand for the Peace Corps has grown, both from the countries we evacuated in 2020, as well as a growing list of countries requesting Peace Corps support today. Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member, and members of the committee, if confirmed as director, my first priority is to safely return Peace Corps, Peace Corps volunteers to service abroad and I will do so in a way that helps us to maintain the flexibility necessary to navigate uncertainty and respond effectively to evolving needs. Second, if confirmed, I will ensure that the Peace Corps remains a strong partner to communities and countries that request our support. This includes building on our long commitment to localization and people-centered development while modernizing and expanding service opportunities so that more, oppor more Americans have the opportunity to serve. Third, if confirmed, I will prioritize youth engagement. Today, there are 1.8 billion people between the ages of 10 and 24, the largest generation of youth in history, many of whom live in developing countries. This is not a problem to be solved. It is an opportunity to be met. In partnership, we will contribute to the next generation of global leaders and change makers, a critical investment for a secure, sustainable, and prosperous future. I would also like to again sincerely thank the committee, to thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member for your leadership on the Peace Corps Reauthorization Act. This legislation offers significant changes that will help us to further strengthen our ability to represent America abroad and to bring essential skills in understanding back to the United States. 
Thank you again for your support of the Peace Corps and for the opportunity to appear before you today. I look forward to your questions.